Hi, everyone, and welcome. This is Karen Newman, and this is the Saturday Human Colony Hukula webinar. <laughs> I just got a message in the in the uh, in the, in my visual field, so I do apologize. Um, it kind of flew me off, threw me off. But it is it is Saturday, the sixth of July, two thousand nineteen. And today we have a very special guest. We have Max Rempel, who is the founder of Human Colony, and he'll be here channeling with us. Max is a PhD, and he has always such great stories about all kinds of things he's working on in the scientific world, as well as his philosophy and theory in the spiritual world. He is doing kirtan and chanting. He, he's always starting, you know, new hangouts for people as far as... Uh, as far as like light language and also human colony and just facilitating a lot of things for a lot of people. So he has a lot of value in the spiritual world and everybody's spiritual journey because he's given everybody an opportunity to participate together and to grow a community. So we really appreciate that, Max. About oh, thank you, thank you. And it's not acknowledged enough, so I wanted to take the opportunity to do so. So I'm, I'm forcing myself not to get excited about all these wonderful topics. I, I, I want to like step out at the moment. <laughs> okay, so you well, we'll get to that in a second. But just to introduce who's in our room, we have Christine, we have Daniel, we have Don. Of course, Don's also <clears throat> manning the uh, YouTube chat. Uh, Master Tech is a name I'm not familiar with, but welcome. Uh, we have Michelle, Randy, Reinhardt, and myself. And we, of course, have you, Max. Hi. Hey. Hey. So just to start, we'll, we have um, a few announcements. Uh, one is the upcoming, very soon, the uh, Fourth Ascension Workshop in, um, in Rochester, New York. That's August the 8th through the 12th. And for $575, you get several days of channeling and fellowship, all kinds of different classes on galactic Reiki and telepathy and meditation and all kinds of things and it's the fourth one it's going to be in rochester why don't you tell everyone about it max oh yeah i mean <laughs> that, that's um uh the presence of spirit is there like really strong you are uh, uh i mean it, it's hard to be present as as in, in that high vibration so you know, it takes time to get in and it takes time to get out. But when you are there, miracles happen like every second. And uh, uh, you get Jim like flying there. Like you can see, I mean, he can switch back and forth between like channeling and non-channeling at any moment. So there is constant conversation with the spirits. And we've been guided by our usual friends. Takur is also there, um, Grindel. Uh, and... Um, some of the yogis and um, some of the yogi masters are, are guiding that. Kut Kuthumi is uh, is uh, is uh, one of the guiding uh, spirits, and uh, he is the one associated with Blavatsky. So I think it's uh, and it's teaching. So basically, you come there; it's a workshop. You you go and um, you learn. You learn. It's a transformation. And one of the things we learn is uh, is uh, how to get back to the to the uh, to the other reality and be be functional in it and um, and and carry these energies back to the world. Thank you, thank you for that. So, <clears throat> also too, if you go to Amazon.com, we have a book uh, that is authored by Max and by Jim, and it's called uh, "From the Galaxy with Love: A Lightworker's Handbook." It's available in uh, hard copy in Kindle and also an audio book. And that is a really wonderful culmination of several years of channeling brought together. Max wrote the book, um, tying everything together and bringing out the principles of everything you need to know about being a light worker and how to get started on your path. And it's if you get a chance, it's from the Galaxy with Love, a Light Worker's Handbook. And Max is leaving, and goodbye. And so. Um, <laughs> So we will continue without him. But anyway, check out the book on Amazon. And why don't we start with some blessings? Who wants to do a blessing today while we're waiting for Max to come back? Don? Do yeah, I'll do one. Right. Michelle, are you going to do a blessing? Michelle? No? Okay, Don, you do one and I'll do one. 
Reinhard, do you want to do a blessing? Yeah, I'll do one. Who's that? Michelle. Okay. All right, we'll start with yeah, Don. Go ahead, Don. Okay, perfect. Start with Don, and we'll come to you, Michelle. Go ahead. Thank you. Namaste. Go ahead, Michelle. Kiera Sozi Vanzi Kasha, Mataturi Vanzi Kasha, Epi Pajunda Epikaria, Ilian Gerion, Andy Koshi, Vasi Kata, Andy Tata. Namaste. Namaste. Reinhard, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Okay. Are you back, Max? Well, part of me, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So, <clears throat> so I was just addressing the air. Oh, okay. So, in the, um, so have you, had, did you get to feel the, uh, the earthquake? Yeah, I missed it all. Um, I think it was very gentle. It's like, like, woo, but, um, but when I saw the, um, the, the reports and I'm, I plugged in my phone, so I, I will, I will get the announcements and mm -hmm. if it starts shaking, I will get out. I wouldn't stay here. Yeah. I might continue on the phone from outside. Okay. Yeah. But I have dogs and, uh, and a cat and, and my son next room. So if uh, anything uh, starts shaking, we need to get out. No problem. If it starts shaking, we want you to get out and get everybody out together. Right. Yeah, right. I was talking oh, to a woman today. I need today. to turn off my phone. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I was talking with a woman today. Uh, she was in Los Angeles, and she said she was in, she was outside of the parking lot of a CVS drugstore. And she's not from California, and she'd never been in an earthquake before. So she said it felt like the ground was literally rolling, like it was a slow roll. And everything inside the CVS from the outside she could see was shaking. So like a fool, the woman grabs her camera, her phone, and runs into the drugstore so that she can like film everything shaking. I said to her, you're not supposed to run into the building. You're supposed to go out of them. But that's a tourist for you. So. <laughs> All right, I turn off my phone. Okay, great. Welcome back again. Okay. So do you want to lead us in the meditation and then we can get started? And if you want to, you can go right into your channeling, however you want to do it. Um, yeah, I'll just the usual stuff. Um, yeah, I guess I'll mm -hmm. start with the chant. Allah, 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 Allah. So I'll bring you Gananda and I, I don't step away usually. I'm I'm here, so it will be a collective. Okay. But you can talk to us as Max or Yogananda, it doesn't matter. Okay. And for people that have questions, write them in the chat, please. And Don will be taking questions from the YouTube. You don't have to write your question, just say you have a question and I'll, and I'll call in. So, we invite you to be aware and get involved. If you're waiting for the change to happen, be aware it's well underway. All the processes that will unfold already started. And you can see them, you can sense them, you can hear them, you can perceive them. Be aware of underground processes that already started. 
The world is going to change very fast. And you are co-creating it. You are co-creating. You may think, you may think, you might think that there is only one reality, only one now. But realize, be aware, every one of you creates a different reality. And only now, for a moment, you came together here into one resonance, one connection, but everyone brings with you a little bit different reality, which you created, because you know it is a dream. And every one of you dreams a little bit of a different dream. You come with a little bit of a different past, and you will create a little bit of a different future. But because you tuned into the same frequency, you now are perceiving each other. So dream well. And pay attention to your body. Why? Because you, you are using the body to dream this dream. You are using this. Your soul is using it as a glove. The soul puts on the glove of the body to dream up the dream of the reality. And this glove matters. Your health matters. Your health creates the illusion of the reality. Your health creates the world. So if you're upset about the world, change your body. Your body is creating it. It's co-creating it. There are things that are seemingly coming from outside, but you perceive them differently depending on your health status, or on your energy, on your vibration. Some people experienced earthquake here and some people didn't. Some people experience disaster and some don't even notice them because they're in a different state, a different state, different vibration, different tuning. Don't be afraid to die. Because dying is coming home. So from that point, everything you create here becomes a celebration. And even leaving the body becomes a celebration. Look at your health. If there are any hiccups, disbalances, see how interesting your life is and make it more interesting because your health is directly proportional to the amount of interest in your life make your life interesting make the energy flow through all of your chakras through all of your layers through all of your spirit bodies don't only work hard on the physical level don't only work hard on the worry level don't only work hard on your meditation combine them all together merge them all together into a healthy body and a healthy interesting life make your life interesting and this is the key to creating a great future there are two rivers coming one from the future to the now one from the past to the now and your body creates them creates a vortex your body creates that future your body creates it now so make it healthy and through your healthy body, create a new future, create a new interesting life, create an interesting life, create a good future for the world, create a future world. 
be aware and get involved. Connecting to other people is the key. You are here together to create that great future. And that's about it. I invite, I invite, we invite comments and questions. Hala, 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 hala. Does anyone have any questions for, for Paramahansa? None so far in the chat. Okay. So Paramahansa, so when you talk about don't be afraid to die. What does that mean? Because do we really die? Um, yeah, everything is illusion and the death is an illusion, of course. We just say, live in the body, returning home. There is a matrix. You're playing in the matrix. Your soul gets a glove of the body and then takes it off and comes home. So don't be afraid of that. Make your death a celebration. Walk your life excitingly to the exciting death. Make the whole process harmonious. Make it beautiful. Don't bring it closer. Don't be afraid of living a long life. Don't be afraid at all. Just make it interesting. Maximize the drama. Maximize the experience. Dream. You hear so much about living in the now, but also live in the future. Live in your dream. Live in the past. Combine together. You don't have to be in this second, in this second, in this second. Allow yourself to breathe. Focus here. Focus on the universe. Focus on all times. You don't have to be now in the now. It can be now in the tomorrow. It can be now in the yesterday. Breathe back and forth. Breathe, breathe back and forth and bring them all together in a harmony. So, um, thank you for that. I have a question and it's something I thought about for a while around death, around the personality of the human that dies. So, because everyone wants to hold on to their self, the part of the person that dies, they want to know that their loved one is on the other side still as they were in life, just sort of floating around and living their afterlife. I have a different idea. I believe that there's the part of you that can still remember your previous life, but that in fact you do really dissolve back into all that is. And then you have the opportunity to come back, but it's not necessarily Karen coming back as a carpenter in another planet or on another country, but it's just the all that is making one more life. And in fact, when I do die, I do dissolve into the nothingness. And that's part of the journey, the soul journey is just arriving and dissolving because if we're really all one everybody's past life is our past life and everybody's now is is our now we're just we're only just singularly focused and i'm wondering if that's correct or if you can comment on that yes 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 i just want to expand that that you're being born every second and you die every second Mm -hmm. The whole idea of personality is not the constant. Mm -hmm. It's the constant of the change. It is acceleration. It is transformation. So it's not how you are. It's how you transform 
the energy flows. The vortex cannot be static. The vortex cannot be existing. The vortex doesn't exi exist when there is no flow. There has to be at least two flows coming together to make a, to make a vortex. There are two strands of DNA to twist around each other. So your personality is the change. Your personality is the vortex of multiple flows. Each chakra is at least two flows. So lots of flows coming together and changing all the time. And yes, you can tap in into the past very easily. You can tap in into the future. You can tap into any life and your personality shines through all of this as a change, as a style, as a voice. As, as a, a unique signature. as a unique signature to, to never really be repeated again. Is that correct? Because it's a variation on a theme. Yes. Okay. And then, of course, there's the multidimensionality and the multiverses that where we exist simultaneously with ourselves. But that's also just unique in itself. So, okay. see, mm, the waking time is a dream. Mm -hmm. And the dreaming time is it's when you come good. back. Mm -hmm to the higher reality. And in the higher reality, everything is possible. Everything is fluid. So when your this physical reality starts to be fluid, when things don't make sense anymore, don't get surprised. It's normal. It's, it's a bleeding through of the higher energies into their 3D. Mm -hmm. So welcome it. Don't be afraid. Yeah. In the Mandukya Upanishad, it talks about the waking, the waking person, the sleeping person, that those are the two realities, that when you're awake, you're in one reality, but when you're also asleep, you're in another reality, but then in deep sleep, you are, in fact, unconscious completely. Mm -hmm. And so in that way, you are, in fact, almost as you would be when you're dead. And the question is, is when you're dead, are you unconscious or conscious are you part of all consciousness which is not individually conscious but but conscious of all as opposed to karen being like myself am i running around as karen in heaven for lack of a better term with the consciousness of being karen or am i truly just observe absorbed back into allness and all of that i am falls away and i just become all of that is, and then at one moment, maybe part of the energy that had been me before, or maybe not necessarily, is sort of thrust back into reality in a new, in a new incarnation, but maybe with no connection to what I was before in any way, shape, or form. Yes, yes, everything at once. Um, one thing to consider is that when you unconscious here, you can be unconscious everywhere, but most likely, most typically, you're just conscious in some world which is so different from physical that when you come back, you cannot even perceive it anymore. Mm -hmm. You know they will, you were very busy doing something, but you have no way of perceiving what it was because it was very different. It was outside of time. You were still changing, but not by the time dragging you forward, or not by creating the time second after second, but by consciously moving from one vibration to another without anything to drag you. It was your free choice, free flight of doing the work there. Mm -hmm. But in other times, yes, you dissolve, and mm -hmm. then you crystallize back okay. into the Mm -hmm. a vortex okay thank you um, my 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 invitation here is i'm here to help so bring your problems questions things to work on okay 
Um, we do have some questions from starting with Christine. Go ahead, Christine. Greetings and blessings. Greetings and blessings. Um, the other morning, about three in the morning, I woke up and um, I found that my elbow was bleeding. And um, I was wondering, do you know how it got to what bit me or what, uh, I don't know, cut me? Can you see? Can you describe the cut? Well, one was two small slashes, and then the other one was a puncture. Just a sec. Sure. I cannot perceive that creature that did it. It was some sort of interdimensional animal, but it was doing a good work because you needed to let out some blood for some ritual purposes to help you to donate a little bit of your blood. And in, in exchange, you get uh, positive changes in your life. That's all I can see at the moment, but take it positively. Okay. I, it, I was just worried why all of a sudden I'm getting attacked at night since I, I'm not an extraordinary person. Me. Yes, you can perceive it as an attack, but it's more, more like uh, shamanic surgery. Okay. Thank you for um, giving me that information. Blessed be. Thank you for asking. Okay, thank you. Um, there's a question from Reinhardt. Go ahead, Reinhardt. Yeah, blessing. This is Reinhardt. I was wondering how the um, while you were talking about that and uh, developing of a new life, well, how can I feel uh, the part of the timeline I am in, and in which part of the 3D to 4D uh, development I am. So this is something where I imagine that through the vortex, I, the higher frequency uh, are coming through and uh, changing slowly all what I am. So also with the light language. So it's always progressing. So that's, I would like to know if uh, you can see something uh, which would uh, help me to understand. I understood. Thanks. Just give me a second. Yes, so the question was uh, ma many questions combined together. How can you make your life more interesting? How can you be more aware of where you are? And how do you ca can you perceive w uh, the timeline and dimensions? Yes, you combine multiple dimensions. Yes, you come from a higher dimension and feel your way in the 3D. And now you do that with a better understanding and better way of manipulating your connection with the 3D. So for you, it is a learning experience of the physical life. And yes, you bring high energies. And yes, light language helps you to ground these high energies into the 3D. So your attention is a learner, a student. So take it as is. Welcome the idea of learning 3D from a higher perspective. Now, 
you started connecting to new people very actively and this is great that's what we welcome connect to them by asking them questions connect to them by trying to perceive who they are their path and what they are destined to tell you what they are destined to teach you so they bring you messages and this is the answer to your to many of your questions so through their words through their energies of others and sometimes they come just for a minute but through these words and through these messages you learn and you ground yourself in the 3d and learn it and learn how to manipulate it so that's a learning experience and we thank you for that thank you Miranda. it makes a lot of sense and um, i will proceed this way of development so i wish you all the best and uh, i will um, tell other people to ask the question thank you very much Thank you. Halla 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 halla. Thank you. Um, there's a question from the chat uh, from AJ and says, "Why do we correlate feline energy to the human women here? Does it resonate better with the feminine?" Thank you. Hmm. Just a sec. I'm there. No problem. We'll wait. <laughs> we say it's very cultural. It really depends on the fashion. The Western fashion of these days, the modern fashion is the glamour is a fashion on women that looks like flexible and look like cats. But it's very temporary. Every one of you has a cow in it in yourself. You have the cat and a dog and a snake and a frog and a cockroach and a spider, all of them, and a dragon, every one of you, and a Neanderthal, most of you. And uh, we love cats. The cat gives you individuality. The cats give you the force, the strength to disconnect from the crowd, from the mistakes of the crowd, from the flow of negativity, and be yourself and be comfortable. Be a joker. Be a clown. And feel be feel very comfortable being on your own path without following many which are mistaken. There is another idea of learning and paying attention and playing and learning through the play. Every one of you, the men, women, children, all intermediate genders. All of you has, have that capacity. But we also respect the dog. Who is a good soldier. 
who is respecting the general, who is respecting the father, who respects authority and hierarchy. And who is an ultimate child? Trusting. And they respect the snake and the spider in you as well. And the dragon as well. Embrace all of it. You have you are all genders. And yes, feminine idea, the feminine femininity idea comes back. Felinity and femininity all come back. <laughs> Tens of thousands of years ago, the Earth had feminine dom dominance, matriarchy. And it had bright sides and dark sides as well. Now it comes back. And you will see again the bright sides and dark sides of matriarchy. Embrace it. And bring it in your awareness. Combine it with the existing world. Embrace, combine, intertwine, and build something beautiful from it. And yes, cats would be helpful in that as well. Hope it was helpful. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> these are the questions from the YouTube chat, so I, I can't, uh, the people won't be asking. I will. Um, but uh, Autumn Rose is asking, what scenario pops into the mind is that, okay, sorry. Okay, sorry, sorry. I asked her question incorrectly. She says, when a scenario pops into the mind, is that tapping into that reality or is it the creation of one? Is it the creation one is creating? I like that question. Yeah. Can you explain it? Okay, she says, when a scenario, when you're sort of daydreaming or when you are you know, thinking of something and it mm -hmm. pops into your mind, she wants to know, are you actually tapping into a reality or are you creating one? Right. Both. It depends on perspective. There is no difference. From, from a certain perspective, there is no difference. From a perspective of you sitting in your brain, it's tapping. Okay. She's a follower. From a perspective of yeah. a soul, it's creating. But it's both. She has another follow-up question. She says, if you can create a scenario in your head or think up an idea, does it exist in some other universe out there? I think that's yes, yes. what magic Bo is, isn't it? That's what magic is. Both of these are true. Um, hold on. I'm, I'm looking for a... Um, for... A, an example, just a sec. Yeah. Suppose uh, you're looking at the clouds using X-ray vision. Yeah. And the clouds are invisible for you. Now you start changing the frequency of your vision, like turning the dial to the visual, and now you see the clouds. Did you create them or were they existing there before? Yes, they sort of were existing, but by conscious looking for them, conscious change, conscious adjustment of your freak, perception frequency, you, f you found them, right? So you did a step toward them and they did a step toward your perception. So... All of those, 
the whole life experience, the whole world experience is you tapping into certain frequency and perceiving the world. It's, it is that simple, but you do the step as well to find it. So you found it, you created it, and it was there before. So all versions of the world exist somewhere in some multidimensional reality with lots of timelines and all the times packed together. But by using your body, using your intention, uh, and by using the focus of your attention, you create this reality. You create it through intention and attention. Intention plus attention is reality. Okay, thank you very much. Um, there's a question from Cami, and she says, how do ascension type events happen somewhere in the galaxy? She says, I suspect that they might be relatively common, therefore our ascension is nothing extraordinary. Yeah. Um, I say it's like birth. It is like getting into adolescence. It is transformation. There is very little outside of the planet which you cannot see in the planet. All of the traits of the universe are here. You are created in image of God in many ways because you have the sparkle of God and everyone around has a sparkle of God and that's why even fish often have human faces. Even stones often have human faces. Even trees have familiar features. It is all one vibration overlapped over another vibration. So, outside of the planet, there are different aspects. They combine differently, but everything which happens there is already can be perceived, almost everything. Much of what is happening out there can be perceived here. The transformations you go through every day, transformations you see in others every day, these are all illustrations of ascension. Ascension is like giving birth, like being born. It is poetic, it is a transformation, but even after transformation, say, there was a, a caterpillar that was transformed in a butterfly, but much of what was in much of what is in butterfly was still in caterpillar. It just transformation mm, of the same energy. So to be more specific, yes, the Earth does it in many ways differently because it is so complex. Many of the energies of the universe are focused on the Earth, are playing out are playing out themselves on earth. But you see awakening of people, you see them changing, that's part of the transformation, that's part of the ascension. So there is nothing, there is nothing that you don't know that will happen. It's all familiar traits, except they come, the awakening comes to much bigger crowds, to much many more people. And once it happens, when people are connected together, the frequency gets so high that the whole world changes. But you would still see, after it happens, you will still see the traits of the past there. So you will still see the same planet there, but it will be transformed and it will, it will be just more harmonious. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, um, there's a question from, let me see. There's a question from uh, Laua, or Laue. I cannot say her name, I do apologize. Uh, she says, I, she says, what is my work in the astral? 
My waking memories are very sketchy, and I have a growing sense of urgency regarding the work I'm doing in the astral. Just a sec. Hmm. I might be... So what I'm perceiving is not very clear, but um, forgive me for lack of clarity. It looks like they up there, you are a messenger. And you work very closely with angels, but you also come to the other areas of the dimensionality and talk to many others. So you carry the messages, the energies, the, the information from the angels to um, the aliens and to the elementals and specifically to the elementals of the earth element. So this would be the dwarves, the gnomes the gnomes and uh, some other creatures of the earth element. So you are very multi-model. You have that ability to transform from angelic energy to elemental energy and back and forth. But your earth mission is uh, very important. So that experience which you get here helps you out there a lot. So your ability to connect the earth element and angelic energy is specifically useful here. So it's all that you learn here allows you to do your work out there. So pay attention to how you combine the two, the higher astral abilities and the physicality here. And the path here seems to be again the path of learning but or learning and doing as, as well learning and acting learning and transforming learning and hmm, bringing messages as well carrying the energies carrying transforming the energies no not actually transforming carrying from one place to another bringing back and forth your messenger here as well that's what we see thank you i have a question about work on the astral if the astral plane is outside of us and everything there is basically in perfect harmony, why is there any work that needs to be done there? What, 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 need, what would need to be done? I thought everything there would be telepathic and instantaneous and easily done. So what is the work why is there work necessary to be done on the astral? Hmm. Let me give you an analogy. Hmm. Some people know Facebook. And you can imagine what happens. So they, for you, Facebook is something on your screen and those people connected. But try to imagine what happens in the offices of the programmers who do that you think there is a harmony there and they really know what they're doing and they have some sort of conspiracy and they have conspiracy against the world it's not exactly like that there is a lot of conflicting energies out there and different parts of uh, the production machinery are conflicting with each other and it is a miracle that they are capable of producing something that works. Um, so yes, in the astral there are wonderful areas of perfect harmony and communication, but uh, these areas are artificially insulated one from another, so they actually can create creative moment. So the life on earth is not as different from the astral as you might think not as different there are different departments different layers and many messengers many workers are working on harmonizing the work of these departments the difference the difference is 
that there is much more transparency, much more awareness, and uh, many more ways how God's will can will the harmony into existence. Here, it is a sanctuary, a reserved space where higher energies intentionally avoid interfering with the free will, free will of the humans. And that's why it became so an interesting experiment. But otherwise, this experiment reflects what's above. There is uh, a nice uh, correspondence between the energies above and the energies below. So is the astral also a simulation? Oh, of course. So the astral is a simulation and the earth is a simulation. Yeah, but in terms of reality, the higher energies are much more real than the lower energies, but all of them are simulation from above and, and it goes layers and layers and layers. It's all the creation. It's all created. It's all the dream of uh, the creator. We are oh. a dream of the creator. Right. That's why, that's why I'd asked the question about when we die and the creator, because right now the creator's asleep, but there's that moment where he wakes up and everything disappears and then he goes back to sleep and begins to dream again. And so I wonder how much of it just gets dissolved and it all starts all over again. So that's just, that was just kind of the basis of my question before, but. There, since there is um, no time, it all exists at once. Exactly. So if you are tuned into their unity, if you are committed to unity, you will get to that place and time, to that to that layer of reality where everything is one. But if you're interested in playing Earth games, you end up here. Okay. All right, thank you for that. Let me see. Um, Ecclesiast, <coughs> excuse me, 888. He wants to know <laughs> if there's any recent modification on the human vessel, emotional response, and memory. Of course, yes, we are making it happen. We are playing it by heart. No, no, we are playing it by ear. I'm sorry, I mistranslated. We are playing it by ear. We are experimenting. If you're familiar, it's called A-B test. We are experimenting and adjusting the parameters of the energies around the planet, in the planet, through the planet, to bring about the positive transformation. Specifically, there are waves of energy. Some of them are astrological. Some of them are intentionally sent by higher level angelic and creator beings, helping their human bodies to transform in the direction of ascension, to be able to accept the higher energies. So some days you feel funny. Don't blame the sickness. Don't blame the infections. Don't blame, don't diagnose it as something that happened to you. Take it as a gift. Take it as an opportunity to transform, accept those energies. They are given to you to energize your life experience, to make your life better, to make your health better, and to make the health of the planet better, to make the humanity ascend. So, adapt. Adapt to these new energies. Welcome them. Place them in proper parts of your energy structure, of your chakra structure, of your mind structure. 
chant and dance. Sometimes you cannot accept them if you are sitting still. You have to dance. And if you cannot dance, just move a little bit. But move, move your spine. The spine as a snake has to curve and dance to accept those energies. Otherwise, they hurt you. So you have to move to avoid the hurt and to actually become improved. It is ascension in its physiological manifestation. And pay attention to your diet. Purity is the answer. Purity. Purify your diet. Purify your body. Purify your intentions. Purif purify your attention. Pay attention to something which is really interesting to you. Really good for you. Which will make your future pure and shiny. Pay attention to good things that happen. And through the diet, through the movement, accept those transformations. I invite you, we invite you, we thank you for accepting them. Take them easy. Don't be afraid to die. But live your life in full. Thank you. Thank you. Can you talk? Because diet becomes a big it's always <clears throat> said by the masters to pay attention to diet. And then you get people who get upset because then they don't know what that means. And so can you really, can you expand on that? Because <clears throat> so that, that people understand what that means, pay attention to your diet. And what do you mean by purity? What does that mean? Most of the healing comes not only from doing new things, not only from accepting the new energies, but also from getting rid of old traumas, old fears. So, to keep good health, you need to let go of a lot of past attachments. That's your main, one of your main functions in these days. To sort out the old stuff and put it away. The humanity is held back by lots of attachments. The modern lifestyle is the product of manufacturing of advertisement. It is manufactured artificially and brought into the values, into the level of values, a lot of things which are not needed at all, like big houses, waste of physical space and physical productive forces into something which you don't need. Learn to live simply, learn to live in a clean way, and learn to pick up from the information flow, pick up what you need and filter out the garbage. So that is one of the main skills you need to filter out the garbage. On the market, pick their vegetables which are full of life force. And nowadays it's really hard to find them. Put your hand on the on the vegetable and feel the energy there. So that's what I, we mean under uh, pay attention to your diet. You really don't want to put in your mouth anything that doesn't have a good energy. And you have to be picky. It's better not to eat something which brings you bad energy. Not to eat poisons. It's better to stay on feed on light and eat only those nutrients which are which feel good typically the, those are organic fresh fresh full of life not preserved not put in the cans thousand years ago not processed full of life yes and if you have to eat meat many of you are have so much of the dog in you or a cat in you 
that you have to eat meat. That's okay. But again, pay attention to how it was raised. And is it a happy meat? And when you eat it, thank the animal that gave it to you. You become one. When you eat it, you become one. It's con it's it is its energy, its flow, its vortex of energy comes to you and becomes part of you. You are that vortex which processes the food, and the food goes through you, and you remain. But it's every time you are made of to out of those energy vortices which come through you and some of them you retain and some of you let go and only by letting go you can actually be healthy hold on a second there is more mm. water yeah yeah water is alive water is conscious so relate to water be with water work with water pay attention to the water you drink to water you bathe and if you have a chance be with live bodies of water, like ponds, rivers, seas, oceans, all of that, rain, work with it. It's, uh, it's one of the wonderful sources of energy for you. Just a second. Look at the cat and the dog. The dog can eat anything. The dog prefers the food which is of low vibe. And they're healthy with that. And the cat is very picky. They won't eat something which is not of good energy. So when you have to eat something which, you, which is not of a high energy, activate the dog in you and you'll be fine. And when you have a choice, activate the cat in you and pick something which is energy, pure and good energy. Thank you. Okay, um, there's another question from, or actually Michelle, can you ask your question or not? Thanks, Karen. Go ahead, sure. Um, I was just wondering if um, how soon we will be able to see um, beings of the fourth dimension, you know, like, um, for example, past relatives um, who, who are now deceased. Um, when is the energy such that we will be able to see into the fourth dimension was my question. Just a sec. Thank you. Uh, it is very individual, and let us be clear about their nomenclature. We usually refer to the third dimension as, or the third domain, third density is the world which is physical, and the fourth density, fourth dimension is the domain of the aliens, flying and saucers and the beings of um, discarnate spirits discarnate spirits um, maybe the fifth dimension or some area of the fifth dimension i would say that so it is not the same it is not the same these are three different domains and there are beings and energy beings of the higher domain some of them have bodies some of them don't some of them create bodies at will and some of them don't create bodies uh, it's many 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 layers but the ones we are talking about is the aliens and the discarnate spirits 
Now, CNOS is available to you at any moment. There is no particular time when it will happen to everybody. Some will see and some will not. It's just a process where more and more people become tuned to that level. The aliens that come and vi are visible to people down below, they come and they transform themselves. They use the technology or their natural ability to come to the 3D and become visible. So they come down, they can come, sometimes can come down a little bit or project themselves. So sometimes they may be in the 3.5 and you still see them, but they're a little bit transparent, something like that. But you are also able, you all have that heart chakra, you all have that higher dimensional vibration to be able to perceive the higher dimensions. So you can perceive them not necessarily through vision. Some people have that transformative mechanism, some of that mechanisms that allow them to see, and some people hear, and most of the people just perceive, they know it's there, but they cannot see them. It's okay, it's all right. So most, most of the discarnate spirits, they uh, don't have bodies anymore, they don't have that shape that uh, they used to have. So to see their shapes, You would see them when they want you to see them. So ask them to send you the visuals and they may they will they would send you the visuals and you may perceive the visuals. But usually it, it is the talk telepathic it's connection. You it is recognition. You recognize that they're here. They're inside you. They they're not this dimension is not somewhere outside. It's inside you. So you perceive them here inside your heart, inside your body. They are just, they come to their focus of your attention. They come to your awareness. So you perceive them and then sometimes they can give you the sound. They can project themselves into your sound perception system. They can project themselves into your visual perception system. Or they can touch you. They can sort of project themselves into your sensors on the skin, but it's all, they do it on their will. They are everywhere. They are not from this dimension. So the space for them is nothing. They can uh, come and... When you come to them, they come to you. So you have to step step towards their dimension, to their, towards their density, and it would make easier for them to come to you and connect. Same with the aliens, and um, the aliens feel a bit discomfortable, they feel a bit heavy in the 3D, and when you move to 4D, you also might feel a bit discomfortable. Your, your physical body would feel a bit uh, out of place. So you have to step halfway and they have to step halfway. But the groups of uh, meditation that invite uh, the aliens are everywhere, and they're called CE5, Close Encounters 5, just join them and enjoy perceiving the aliens and come to you halfway. And sometimes uh, they come even more. And some places on Earth are much more conducive to those uh, communications. So travel and look for those places where you can perceive the uh, higher dimensional energies easier and it will help. And pay attention to your diet, pay attention to your health, because a healthy body would easily, would be, it would be easier for a healthy body to transform and perceive. When you are brought down by um, uh, dirty energies of food, then it's harder to, to get there, harder to perceive the higher dimensions. So good diet and good uh, healthy movement of the body really helps to do the dimensional perception and to dimensional transformations. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much.
It's interesting you talk about uh, CE5 protocols because a few years ago we did have Costa Macreas and his wife on. Um, they had worked with Stephen Greer uh, and learned to do CE5, and they have they actually have a group called um, something something ET. But they had been on a couple years ago and they talked to people from Human Colony about CE5. But I'd love to see some people here who would be interested in doing it and participating in it. <clears throat> There's groups all over the country, all over the world, doing CE5 protocols. So please check it out. It would be really interesting. Um, there's a question from um, Ecclesiast. He says, uh, is it possible? Um, no, excuse me. He said, what is the percentage of light beings <clears throat> that incarnated into this reality? Are they from the great central sun? That's his question. Hmm. Let me look into that, just a sec. The percent is small, less than 1%, and um, they're not necessarily from the central sun. No, it could be any star energy. It's uh, not easy for them to be here, so um, they're usually hybrid. They're usually hybrid souls which have uh, a, a tint of uh, a star energy and... Uh, something else like more like a human soul or something they have to be compatible though so it could be like an alien plus a star being into one in the one many of you are sort of have hybrid threads of of different um alien angelic human soul threads so you are your hybrids not only on the uh, on their genetic level but also on the soul level not all of you, but many of you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> there was, when you were talking about uh, contacting the extra dimensional beings, fourth dimensional and higher, um, that being an in internal connection. I know um, several years ago I did an interview and someone asked me uh, when would we have contact with our intergalactic uh, friends, our intergalactic brothers and sisters. And that was precisely the response that um, Theos gave, that intergalactic meant inside and inter. It was not an outside connection. Um, can you expand a little bit on more on that? Because that is the hardest thing that humans can conceive of. They want to see everything with their physical eyes and they're not trusting their internal connection. And really that is, I mean, there will probably be some external stuff, but the majority, especially for beings that are non-physical, you're not going to, they're not going to walk up to you on the street and you're not going to see them with your physical eyes. So can you maybe talk a little bit more about the intergalactic or internal connection that we need to develop and how is that developed well thank you for asking thank you for clarifying uh this is a different question the first question i was answering when we will be able to perceive higher dimensional beings mm -hmm. and from the place where you are you cannot right. to see them outside of the body with your physical eyes because so you have to move dimensionally towards them to and then they have to move towards you so you can perceive each other. So these are dimensions are not necessarily connected in space. Sometimes they are linked in space. So the flying saucer could be higher dimensional, but it also comes to the to the earth, which is in lower dimension. But the space wise, they're sort of in the same in the same coordinates. Right. 
But um, this is a different question. When physically these beings become just like when when do they come, right? So that's the question. And that's physically it's possible they would have to like step down in dimensions and send the representatives to the planet. It's all very possible. It's technologically very possible. They can do that. They have technology. Some of them can exist here for a short time, for an hour. Some of them can exist here for two days. And some hybrids can be here for uh, as long as you wish. So it is very technically possible. So the problem is only the official regulations. The Earth has to qualify for that. And... For that, there the majority or representative ma representative majority. Hold on a second, I'll formulate. The elected representatives or the majority have to be in favor of inviting the aliens. So it's all only diplomacy and politics. And you can see that their official line has changed from laughing at extraterrestrials. They moved to just taking them as a common thing. So the news have got, the news agencies, the news outlets has uh, received their directions to stop laughing at the aliens and take them as a common thing. So more and more there are announcements of aliens being real. And it looks like humanity swallows it without the panic. So. It became an official line already, and you can see that they are just having their timeline, they have the plans, and uh, they are officially bringing their aliens into the human uh, perception and the human awareness all around the world, especially in the West. So when it becomes commonplace, when people just realize it's not prohibited officially to talk about the aliens, it will be much easier for the decisions to be made and for the elected representatives to approve their contact. And it's again, again it's up to their, to you guys, it's up to their people of the planet to develop the time to transform. Now, Elon Musk is uh, also part of this transformation and uh, having a, an official colony on Mars, in, an, in, an, in addition to unofficial ones, to having an official com colony on Mars, publicly known, publicly open colony on Mars would really make the planet, uh, the civilization, the multi-planetary civilization. And that would change the status of the planet as well. So this would be a huge factor supporting the idea that the Earth is qualified for the first contact and the open contact, for the official open contact. <coughs> we cannot... You cannot give any timeline, but it looks like you're doing really well in that direction. So please proceed. Please. Uh, mm, help that process. That would be very healthy for the planet. Do you want to hear more there? Obviously, there is a lot of xenophobia in the earthens some people are against the foreigners and the aliens are uh, triple foreigners <laughs> so solving the problem of xenophobia is uh, is necessary when the humans are capable of perceiving the others and uh, seeing the others as neutrals as brothers and uh, not to be afraid and not to be competing with them then it would be much easier for their 
aliens to come and visit. They certainly don't want to take responsibility. They're, they realize very well that the principle of the free will of the earthens is to be respected. Free will is the main component of the earth experiment. The earthens are given free will and only very little of intervention is permitted. Like changing the energies, helping with the weather, giving bits and bits of prophecies, teaching, but only informational help, only energetic help is uh, permitted. Your free will is the top priority, top rule, top condition. So the earthens, billions of you have to express the will to have the contact. And the contact will be mostly informational. There will be gradual presence, but the aliens wouldn't take the responsibility, wouldn't take away your free will. You will have to exercise it in full. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, I don't see any other questions. Does anyone else have a question here in the room? Yeah, if you need to have things changed, we would like to help with that. So ask for help in any direction, financial, health-wise, romance-wise, relationships-wise. So if you want some healing for, you know, health, relationships, finance, anything that you can think of, that's also something that is being offered at the moment. Um, if anyone has any requests for that. Christine would like some healing. Christine, can you maybe tell what you are asking for? Yeah, um, I've been having um, reoccurring problems with my spine. And um, if you could help with that, or the osteoporosis, or, um, or the high blood pressure, or the diabetes, take your pick. <laughs> oh, thank you. Everyone who wants to participate, uh, send your healing energies and receive the healing energies. Um, realize that healing is in is within your reach healing is possible you can achieve it very easily but you have to pay you have to drop some of your attachments choose what to draw but you have to drop something you have to disconnect from something some of the old attachments have to go. So the fluids of your body need some structuring. Your blood, the fluids, the lymph, we need to work on that. And that will help the spine. It will help, help the bones. So we invite the water element. We work with, with the water, we work with the fluid. How much do you chant? Chant more. The chanting would help the air and the fluid and the bones. The sound of your voice would be transmitted to your spine through your 
um, lungs and through the body, through the bones of the ribs, will be transmitted transmitted to your spine and will heal the spine. Oh, la, 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 la. So chant with me. Chant now. Do you do self massage? You need to do self massage. Ah, la, la, la. If you cannot use the fingers, just use any part. Uh, you can uh, come to the tree and massage yourself, your back, by rubbing it against the tree. And uh, chemical elements. There is a disbalance of chemical elements. So mm, pay attention of minerals. Two minerals. Mm. Mm. Maybe the food you eat is too clean. You need a little bit of dirt in your body, like the elements from the dirt. I don't know how to get them. Just a sec. Oh, I guess nowadays you get them from uh, from the store. Just mm, there is edible clay, but also there is uh, uh, like those major mineral supplements. Uh, pay attention to amount of salt we eat. Hmm. It feels like you need less salt. It looks like you need less salt. Okay. Because it sort of replaces what, what you need. You need like less of it so other elements can, can be absorbed. Yeah, foods of red color and radishes would be great. Allah, 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 radishes. Every day, fresh radishes. Allah, la 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 la. Oh do 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 do. And with that, we complete the process. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, there is a question from uh, Jess. Uh, it says, what can you tell about the ships sighted above the July 4th gathering with the president in D.C.? All right, the information is blocked from me, but I wouldn't be surprised to find out that it was human ships from uh, from the Earth. Okay, thank you. It was more like a demonstration rather than anything else. Okay. And I feel that it was pretty much coordinated with the Earth's uh, people. Uh, Earth, uh, not people, how do you call them? With the... Media? No, the other ones. The, the ones on the top. Oh. Yeah, the ones on the top. The, 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 uh, the government. <laughs> or, or above, yeah. The ones above the government. All right. Was, I, I hadn't heard about this, so I'm wondering, was this like, is this common knowledge? Is there foot photographs? Or was it seen by multiple people? I haven't, what, I, I didn't hear anything about it. So, um, okay. Um, also, Jess is saying she would like some healing, love some healing. Uh, she has CFS uh, for four years now, and that would be really appreciated. Chronic fatigue syndrome, she means. Ah. What's the name? Jess. Jess. Is it a male or female? Don, do you know? All right. It doesn't matter. That's okay. We don't know. Human, yeah, we will say. Most a likely. A human okay. being. <laughs> Yeah. Ah. Ah, just a second. 
So the the first message: make your life interesting. Mm. Make your life interesting is uh, very relevant here. Oh la 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 ha. Oh la 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 la. You need to go through their experience of death and rebirth. You don't have to physically die, but you have to have that experience. Oh la 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 And it is coming, don't be afraid. When you feel that you are dying, and there will be pain. Just enjoy it. It's it's fun. It allows you to exit from the body and come back. It's it's like a hard reset on a computer. You just unplug it, plug it back, and the soul comes back to the body, and the bugs are psh, disappear. They're the computer bugs. They're bad energies. So there are some bad energies that, that are stuck in the interface between the soul as a as a hand and body as a glove there are bad there, so you have to take the glove off like shake the sand off and put it back so it's coming be prepared take it easy um you can curse if you have too much pain but like leave the body come back and once you're doing that chant Chanting the name of Rama would help. Rama, 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 Ram, 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 Ram. Remember that sound and chant through the experience, and you will come back refreshed. Ram, 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 Ram. But after you come back. Use that opportunity. Be thankful. You are given that gift of rebirth to, to not to come back to your old ways, but to find new, interesting ways to live through life with more energy, more experience, more drama. Enjoy the drama. Enjoy the ride. It's a gift. You wanted it. You are getting it. Um, 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 um. And with that, that piece is complete. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, uh, there's a question from uh, Sandra. She's saying she would like to connect better with her guides to be able to channel and allow light languages to flow easily. Would you be able to help with this? Yeah, sure. Just so. And just as a female, just by the way. Thank you. <sighs> Is Sandra available to conversation or is she only sending a message um, youtube um we can try to get her to no that's okay that's fine okay. i'm just but she's watching <sighs> step one Find people to hear you. Find a trusted friend, someone who would really appreciate the message. The message goes way, comes way easier when there is uh, someone needing it. So wait for an opportunity. Come with, find people, and uh, when there is an opportunity, when there is a need, the language will come through. Combine it with healing. Discover or ad advance, develop a healer within you. And once you do healing, 
the light language will plug in very easily, very normally. Don't expect your light language to be the same as the one you hear. It could be very different. And ultimately, look for communities of people speaking light languages. There is so many of them. Some of them are online. Some of them are on Facebook. Some of the people here are part of those communities. And also there are local ones. Locals are so valuable because the physicality helps a lot. Being in presence of someone speaking ignites your abilities. You can plug into their keys and then sh they will be shared with you so you can tune into their frequencies with much ease. So look for people who can catalyze, facilitate your transformation. And pay attention to your diet. The proper purity of the body really helps the languages, really helps. Purity, health, great energy flow really helps. So when the love language comes, it transforms you. Be ready for that transformation. Accept it with uh, gratitude. <laughs> Working on your throat chakra Working on your mind chakra Going down, working on your heart Combine all three together And combine all chakras together Intertwining the flows and harmonizing them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> is there anyone else that wanted that had a questions for for Max and his collective and Yogananda and the collective? We are coming up to, we've got about 15 minutes left. So if there's anything that you would like to share with us to, to take us through a healing, a mass healing or meditation, it would be great. Mass healing, yeah. Uh -huh. Mass healing or anything you would like to teach us that we can do as our own practice and, and start implementing some of the things that you're talking about. Oh, 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 before we do that, sorry, there's one more healing request. Um, sure. Laue is asking for help with her lymphatic system. Is the name Laue? It's, I always say incorrect, it's Laue. Okay. And uh, if, I, I, if I'm saying it wrong, I do I apologize again. Thank you. Mm. Just a sec, just a sec, let me tune in. Mm. Ah. So first thing we would like to invite you to do some yoga type exercises, slow movements, slow stretches. The joints are important because most of lymphatic vessels, the, the homes of lymphatic cells are in the joints. So pay attention to your joints, massage them, bend them gently, um, stretch gently. Pay attention to that. That is one. So movement, slow movement with attention. Attention and intention on, on your lymphatic cells. Communicate to them. They are conscious. They're part of you, and they need your help. They need you to be there. You be your lymphatic system. You are your lymphatic system. And the second thing we wanted to say is the trouble comes from your uh, ancestral upbringing. Your ancestors 
and your childhood. There is uh, so much blockage and restriction there. There is a hard restriction. You made a huge leap forward in your understanding, but you became disconnected from from the ancestral energy. So now your way of healing would be to reconnect back to your parents, your childhood, and your ancestors to take the energy from them while filtering out the trauma, getting rid of that trauma. And so let me give you an example. Say so you got let me say, ah, what a, a banana. You don't chew the banana with the skin. You have to take off the skin and take the, the inside of the banana. Same thing with the energy from ancestors. Take their healthy energy, take the healthy flow, and take off the skins and dispose them or recycle them. You don't need to take their trauma, you don't need to take their worries, take only the good energy. There is a disconnect between your soul and their human ancestors. The soul has trouble accepting this ancestry. The soul wants everything shiny, everything fine. And the ancestry brings the heavy stuff. But that's what holds you on the planet because you need both. You need the light and the dark. You need the light and heavy. So bring them together. Mm. It's good to feel sad. It's good to feel romantic. It's good to feel nostalgic. Enjoy that energy. Read romantic poetry, sing romantic songs. That what fills your life with uh, interest, in, fills your life with interest, and uh, that's the main tune for your uh, healing. Sad romantic songs. We love you. Thank you so very much for that. Do you want to do a whole mass healing now with everyone? <laughs> <laughs> mass healing. Mm. Mass healing for the planet, for our the people here, for everything, maybe. And people can maybe direct the energy where they need to. But. Oh yes, that's that's good. That's so everybody now we heal the yeah, do do you do your part. So um prepare for the meditation. Mm. Start chanting with me. Om ma 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 ma. Pay attention to your feet. Pay attention to your body, legs, spine. Sit, move a little bit in your chair. Pay attention to your breathing. Breathe slowly and consciously. Smell the air. Mm. Taste saliva in your mouth. Mm. La, 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 la. Connect to the water in your blood. La, 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 la. Connect to your mm. tears in your eyes. La, 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 la. Hum, Connect to the crystal of your bones. La, la, la. You are a crystal, a living crystal. Now, the air in your lungs is the atmosphere of your planet. You are one. The oxygen in your blood is the oxygen of your planet. You are connected. You are one. 
The crystal of your bones is a crystal of your planet. Oh, la, 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 la. The silica of your bones is a silica of the sand. Oh, la, 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 la. The carbon of your mm, biological molecules is the carbon of the plants on the planet. Oh, la, 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 la. And the seaweed and um, the living mass of the ocean. The water of your body is the water of the ocean. <clears throat> and the life in you is the fire of the sun. Combine it all together. You are one. Wish the healing for the planet. Wish the cleaning of the oceans. Wish the cleaning of the air. Wish the cleaning of the rains of the rivers. Wish the cleaning of the cities. Wish the cleaning of the mines. You are connected to the source. Your body is the transformer. You can transform the purity of the source into the purity of the minds. Bring that purity to others. Transform into their vibration and wish them to receive that bliss. Place a palm on your heart, connect to your heart, and through that heart, connect to the hearts of the people of the planet. Bring the peace to them, bring the understanding, bring the wisdom. Through you, they receive the message of the Source. Transform the message of the Source to the message for people. Bring them clarity. Give them unity. Give them forgiveness. Give them understanding. Give them kindness. And now transform yourself. Light up the energy of your body. Light up the energy of your DNA. Bring the energy of the sun into every molecule of your DNA. Sparkle, ignite the fire in your DNA. Feel the sadness. There's the darkness leaving your DNA and the light ignites there. Experience that sadness and let it go. Embrace it. Embrace it. Send it back to the source. Send it back to the sun. Through the sun, back to the source. That sadness from your DNA, through your heart, to the sun, to the source, live in your body. Remember the pain. Send it to the source. Get rid of it. Just get rid of the pain. Clean it up. Clean it up. Bring a fire in your heart and let it shine. Purple fire, orange fire, green fire, red fire, blue fire, white fire in your heart. Take it 
take a little piece of DNA, just rub it, clean it, brush it, take a toothbrush, clean it a little bit. La 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 la. Take Kim wipes and uh, wipe it clean, polish it, pour some water on it, polish it, make it shiny, ignite the fire there, blow some of the, your soul into your DNA, ignite the fire, see it shining, spread it all over your body your dna is ignited the sun is there shining even if it is dark outside your dna is shining perfectly your soul comes to your body through that fire The snake comes, it's you, it's part of you, place it in your spine, the snake, the spine become one, Allah, Allah, Allah. it brings green energy, Allah, 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 Allah. it brings wisdom, it brings strength, it brings flexibility, it brings life, the fire goes through your spine back and forth, Allah, 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 Allah. The snake enters your DNA. Allah, 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 Allah. It becomes the center core of the DNA. Allah, 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 Allah. It loves the fire. It likes loves the sun in the DNA. The snake, the spiral snake in the core of your DNA is the connector of your soul to your body. Now feel the unity of your DNA with the DNA of all other people. Allah, 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 and the aliens, who your relatives. Allah, 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 all that energy is one. And you have same water, same molecules, same elements as plants on the planet. So resonate with the plants. The green energy of your fire and the green energy of the plants come together. Feel that unity. Transform the world. You transform yourself, transform the world. Ignite the green energy in the world. It's all you, it's all one. You can ignite the world. Ignite the good energy, green energy, healing energy in the world. There is life, lots of life energy coming to the planet. Ignite it in every plant. Ignited in every animal. Ignited in every human. Share the wisdom. Send the wisdom. Send the clarity to everyone. We love you. We love you. We love you. Allah. With that, we complete. Thank you. I cannot hear anything. It just disconnected me. Sorry, I'm talking away. I, I was I was saying that there. <laughs> sorry, I was telling you thank you and and uh, how wonderful that was. And and I was actually saying, are you back, Max? 
<laughs> <laughs> so um, the, Paula said uh, something in the YouTube, and, and, and I agree with her. She said, Yogananda is always such a pleasure when teaming up with Max. So thank okay, you very yeah. much for that. Um, and thank you. So how do you feel? You feel okay? Yeah, I have a little uh, question to people. If anybody knows anyone in Denver, uh, I would be interested in connecting in Denver. I have now a connection to Denver. Okay. I'll be traveling back and forth. Okay, well, in Denver, Colorado, you're up. If you have, yep. if you want to connect with, with Max, you can. Um, right. Also, so uh, once again, thank you very much. Sure, uh, next week, uh, Jim will be back. Um, and I have an announcement. Um, remember when I said that the... Uh, when I first started the webinar, a notice came up. I don't know if it came up for everybody, but it came up right in the screen. And it, it informs that YouTube is going to stop with Google with Hangouts as of August 1st. So Yeah, YouTube is dying. It's rotting in. Um, <laughs> so, we have a backup system now, so we're good. So we can go for, to, we're, we're going to move to Zoom. Um, and we can stream live still on YouTube via Zoom. Um, mm -hmm. And you can also stream to Facebook, but talk to Alex, see if we can do both. One or the other will still stay on YouTube streaming, but instead of probably in the next, we have two more weeks before uh, it switches over. And so um, everyone who does come in the room, in the Hangout room, whether you come in in the paid webinars or if you come in just randomly, please make sure you download Zoom because there's not going to be Google Hangouts. It just won't, we won't be able to live stream from there. So please download Zoom. And we will make sure that we have a very efficient way to make sure those links go out also through Facebook and through the mailing that we do. But <clears throat> just be informed as of so two more, maybe two more. We'll talk to Alex, see what we're going to do. But at least one more hangout uh, on uh, in the hangouts. And then then maybe we're going to go ahead and move to Zoom in two weeks. So just be informed. And that'll be all over everyone in YouTube who uses hangouts. So and you see, we were prepared. We knew that happened. Yeah, we were prepared. We've been expecting some changes to come. And we're also looking for some other streaming platforms to use in addition to YouTube, because with all the changes and the sort of corporate buyouts of YouTube, you know, getting more commercial and everything, who knows <laughs> what's going to happen. So Yeah, I mean, we see the, the end of the free internet, so yeah. don't be surprised. Yep. So we may have to move over to some other platform, but if if we have to go, most everyone else will be moving. So there'll there'll be a new YouTube. We just don't know what that's going to be yet. Hopefully, it'll we'll stay. We can stay here for a while, and we'll we'll take it as it comes. But everyone, but you know how to find us. Just Google Hukula. Yeah. Yeah. Just download Zoom, <laughs> so mm -hmm. that so that when you want to come in the Hangout or come in the Zoom room, Zoom room. That's hard to say when you want to come in. And Facebook group, uh, Hugh Colomain, just mm -hmm. join that group. I mean, that's that's how you find us. Yeah, and for the people that don't go on Facebook, you can always come to us through the org website. So the mm -hmm. information is always there. So you can stay with us. But just be just. I was surprised because I, I pushed uh, go live, and all of a sudden this notice came up in my face. That's why I was like, what? What is it saying? Oh, well, that's what it was. Ah. Yeah, it says, as of... One well, August, Hangouts will no longer uh, be available for live streaming. And so while we were talking, I was doing some research. And <clears throat> it turns out it's true. <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, but, but ain't nothing but a thing, <laughs> as they say. <laughs> when we're ready for it. So no problem. <clears throat> so next week, we'll have Jim back. And thank you, Max. It was really nice. Thank you for having me. Yeah, always. It was You're beautiful. Always. Thank you. I try to get him to come on more, you guys, but he just ne never wants to. He's always a busy. He's always busy. So also in two hours, um, we'll be starting the light language uh, webinar uh, or Zoom. Uh, and Reinhard, Reinhard runs that, is that right or not? Yes, I will run it, um, but it will be in one hour because oh, one hour, okay. Yeah, we didn't want to have too long time in between, so that's the choice we take. We have taken, okay. and the Tuesday one will be uh, on the old times what we had always had. Okay, How to find the link? Yeah, yeah, the link will be provided 
um, shortly before. Yeah, but where? Who, for people who are watching that don't know how to find the link, where is it provided? It's provided, um, I can put it in the keepers of the codes because it is linked to the keepers of the codes and uh, also the other members will be informed about the link. Yeah, that, that's Facebook group is called Keepers of the Codes. Yes. Right, and it'll be there. So, okay. And if you're not a member of that group, please join. And that, that group is dedicated specifically. It takes a few hours to join because uh, you apply, you have to answer the questions. And there are 12 guardians, <laughs> physical, very, very dedicated. So you have to answer the questions properly and then they will let you in. Yeah. You can also, because it's, you can also put the notice in the Hukalo main group if you want. So that other people who don't maybe aren't a member of the group quite yet can can get it because it's it's not a keepers of the code um, webinar it's a it's through us so it just includes members from that group as well so and you can also message Reinhardt through Facebook yeah yes yeah, if they know him if they know him so on okay. Hugh Color Group yeah yeah. Okay, so everyone, see you next week, Your next time. No signal, so I can't help you with that at the moment. My phone is telling us. I, <laughs> <laughs> just, I didn't ask my phone for anything, but apparently it's mm -hmm. chiming in as well. So much love to everyone. We'll see you next week. And download Zoom. Download Zoom. Okay. okay. Much love to you. Bye-bye.